Welcome once again to the series CyberSec a way of life brought to you by L&D today and powered by Arcon Tech Solutions. Our leader today comes with over 3 decades of experience in India and internationally in information technology. He has been in national and global leadership roles for managing and developing large scale IT infrastructure and networks, service delivery units with functional ownership. His contribution to his roles have increased profitability, reduced costs, and enhanced processes and improved productivity. He has implemented technologies like advanced IT tech, RPA, cognitive tech, and big data integration. Please welcome Mr. Khushru Mistri, CIO and VP at Eureka Forbes. Talking about cyber security, right? Uh, Eureka Forbes. Uh, primarily comes from an on-prem legacy uh, systems and you mentioned in one of your other interviews uh, that the digital transformation started from 2018 or how how easy or difficult was handling the pandemic situation for your eco firms um from a from a systems perspective it was easy right because you implemented we it we implemented we went into the cloud about a year and a half before the pandemic hit our frontline staff always had a uh, mobile application based technology so the entire world of a sales person or a service person on the field is his mobile okay so we already had that technology but the pandemic put another variant into the picture which was how do you do this remotely nobody wants to entertain you in their house nobody wants to come near you right. nobody wants to go into a shop and touch equipment they're scared So we had to develop products whereby we could do demo from a distance, right? So I could be sitting in my own house as a salesperson, and I have an appointment with you, and I can show you the demo of the entire product on your mobile phone, okay? And because it's video conferencing, we found a lot of traction on that because people found that as that we were we were we were showing empathy. they were in lockdown they wanted to talk to somebody we were showing up a face on video and they were chatting with us not primarily about the product but they were just happy to talk to you okay because you were in lockdown nobody wanted to come near you okay and we found that empathy uh, creating something what we call as a lifetime value with the customer right and that product is getting developed more and more with with artificial base a uh, virtual reality augmented reality product so you can actually feel okay as you're going through the motions on a phone you can actually dissect the equipment to see how it works i think that's a very interesting concept right it gives i mean there's a lot of awareness in that yes it creates awareness and as you're going through the video somebody is actually talking to you and and taking you through it so it's not just a video which is one way it's an interactive session which happens now, of course this is continuous development which is happening but i think that's what the pandemic proved in retail shops nobody wanted to touch equipment to say how do i do a demo so we had qr code you scan it on your phone and you can see the demo you don't touch the equipment at all because nobody wanted to do it they wanted to just come in buy it and move out and i believe these solutions that you spoke of this would have come out uh, come out at a really fast uh, in uh, a really fast oh manner. yeah yeah um one of the things which we came out very fast within 3 months of the pandemic in from march onwards was what we call as as the yorker forbes customer app if you have a problem with your purifier or your vacuum cleaner how would you report a problem because the call centers were not operational at that time we had to bring people into the house provide connectivity so we brought it out virtually you could set up an appointment we will also be able to tell you if you are in a red zone okay then we would have to take specific permissions to come in so it would take time right. we were utilizing people like swiggy okay to deliver spare parts and then we would orient with a le- local tra- technician within that red zone right. okay to go and replace the part and we would lead him through a phone or a whatsapp call at that time okay so i think uh, you know innovations at that time were at its height and we were quite amazed of what people came up with right okay we never thought that we could use swiggy for delivery right but we did so the jugad mindset did did work in yeah. this context yes and 
and innovation is is the mother of all requirements true. okay when you are in problems innovation comes out at its best yeah and the most simplest of them Sometimes it's a simple it's simple things. technology okay. which is just cobbled together and guess what it worked very well for us as long as it works yeah uh, and uh, i think it's 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 the manner of working has changed okay what they call as new normal and everything uh, it's the way of working now it's not going to change it's true now uh, eureka forbes has two crores plus customers uh, in the country itself which is a lot of data so when you have to think of security what are your top concerns and how do you handle them protect the data protect the customer protect the company okay um when you talk about 2 crores of data that equates to about 16 17 terabytes of data of of the customer all right and that has its own uh, connotation so if you ask me what the, uh, doesn't allow me to sleep at night is that there are times when then we was we were quite sensitized to the fact that how do you protect the data again the, because we were in the cloud right. all right because we were utilizing newer age technology because we were providing something called air gaps right. you know that oriented us to think of, okay we are quite safe uh but that is always a concern because there's a difference between the data privacy side of it and there's a difference with with securitization of your data okay there are two different uh, different things which have to be considered at all times so so we have to protect our data and that is what my top priority is for the for the company true absolutely and of course privacy being the buzzword in the recent times well unfortunately if you look at it there's nothing called privacy <laughs> in there's nothing called privacy in essence nothing called privacy because people put things on facebook on twitter or on instagram okay on everything okay without realizing the implications it can cause and then we talk about social engineering of the data so privacy is a is a very difficult way of controlling until the end consumer is able to protect themselves but the data is our concern we have to securitize that and to ensure that that we will never compromise that absolutely now uh the entire ecosystem of employees and vendors of eureka forbes are on a smart mobile technology like you mentioned uh, again which is huge in numbers uh, what kind of threats would come from these users knowingly or unknowingly how are you creating awareness about these threats to the users um we have franchisees we have business partners we have business partner service technicians so the data which we provide is limited to what they utilize need to know basis need to know basis okay but at the same time we don't restrict it okay and um, and i think those those are the issues which cause a problem so if you take a sa- standard business partner they are pc users users of pcs connecting over the internet but how do you make them aware that even their pc needs to be protected because they have to protect themselves so it's all about educating them it's everything is about education in cyber security work so continuous about, awareness continuous awareness continuous education if that is not done okay because india is not very cyber security aware even today right. okay because it comes at a cost <laughs> you think that would be a it comes as a cost but at the same time the cost of a cyber issue is way higher is way it's maybe 10000 times more it can destroy companies we have seen it destroying companies true okay so uh, in the cyber security context uh, how big was the cyber sec industry in india pre covid and how big will it be post covid or in the future let me give you one statistic june 29th of june 2021 uh, the india came out with a report indicating that between last june of 2020 till this June of 2021 there were 1.16 million cyber threat attacks which is about 3000 per day wow. right so it's 3x it's gone up by 3x from 2019 and cyber security companies are grappling 
to come up with products which is faster than the cyber threat vectors itself. So this industry is going to boom out of proportion, okay, because it does not utilize just the traditional methods, okay. Um, the threat vectors are utilizing artificial intelligence to initiate attacks. The vendors of cybersecurity are utilizing AI to prevent the attacks. So it's a it's a combinatorial thing, whereby who does it better? Right. Okay. Right. And I think so. This industry is in India is going to boom, uh, maybe four, five, six x within a, with every single year, not over a five year period. Every single year, because you need to keep up. True. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not the case with multi multiple companies in this in, in India. Okay, uh, I think it's more reactive than proactive. So only when something happens. Only when, when something happens. Yeah, and we are continuously in the process from a Eureka Forbes perspective because that is top of the mind. Whether it's at the at the at the core leadership level or at the board level, that's top of the mind. Absolutely. Now, uh, what do you think are the key components to be looked into when, when anybody is considering a cybersecurity solution for their organizations? Um, people always consider the cybersecurity is of the firewalls. As long as you control the perimet perimeter, everything is safe. Okay, that's false paradigm. Okay, a complete false. Okay, you have to protect it at the endpoint. Yes, you have perimeters, you know. But you have to look at also internally, okay? You have to protect the endpoints. Most of the issues come up because of laxity of the internal employees, okay? Right? Um, and and this the, the, the use cases are tremendously high, right? You find a, um, um, a pen which is lying on the floor, you pick it up, okay? You try it out, okay? The same thing happens if you find a USB lying around, you will pick it up and plug it in. Okay, guess what? That's it. So I think it's the awareness. It's the, uh, so finding the right product, finding a product which will, which will, which will encapsulate your endpoint security, which will encapsulate, encapsulate people who are next to you also. All right. And there are products which are coming out, which, which do that. Yes, they're expensive. I would not say they are not. But ultimately, the balance is what could a cybersecurity issue do to your company is against would I spend this money to secure my company is always a balance which we have to do. And of course, training. Training. Awareness. Cybersecurity training and awareness is the most important thing because it's not just about it's not just about the company. It's not about the employees, it's about the individual. Because if they are not they are not careful enough, it can impact their lives and livelihoods. True, true. I mean, people have, would have lost jobs as well. Yes. I mean, so much yeah. uh, of the implication. True. Now, uh, uh, leading on from there, uh, cyber insurance is still at a nascent uh, stage in India. Do you think it will grow in the coming years? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We are still also in a nascent stage of taking cybersecurity, uh, and uh, but we are, I would say, we are ahead of the industry a little bit. Uh, cyber cyber insurance is, I would say, as important for a company as taking an insurance on against fire or theft. It is it is at that level now. Uh, everything else is is real in nature, a fire theft cyber is something uh, which can happen from anywhere in the world so taking a cyber security insurance uh, whatever small it is however small it is it is it is now a necessity true we are we are ready to take that forward now right. okay i think the mindset it's the, the mindset. accepting it's the mindset acceptance of acceptance system. yeah true true interesting um so how will cybersecurity threats continue to evolve? Um, cybersecurity is evolving at a pace 
which outpaces the production of technology to prevent it. Okay. And this is not because of, of um, things like a standard attack. Okay. Some of them are state-sponsored attacks. Okay. Um, and India has also visualized some of that with the municipal corporation, with smart cities. Okay. Uh, when India banned the Chinese applications. Right. right? So, so those things are going to evolve. Okay. The most important thing is, and it boils down to, will it happen at the country level? Will it happen at the individual level? It's happening at both. When we see, when we look at the statistics, it's even smaller companies are getting impacted. True. Okay. So it's not just the big companies which have the wherewithal muscle to pay for it. True. Uh, is there? It impacts across the board. It's going to increase. Okay. Because it's like. As you start utilizing connected cars, everything is, as they say, the Internet of Things. It's in, in fact, Internet of Everything. So you have a chip which is going to be there in every device which you can imagine going forward. You're looking at cars today. You're looking at, uh, at talking, uh, you know, water purifiers, for example. <laughs> you know, now I don't need to tell a water purifier to dispense water. I would just go and put a glass. So why do you need that? But there's a demand for it, okay? Connected cars, okay? Uh, you know, any car today, which I can even think about, has more chips inside it than what it used to be 10 to 15 years back. True. And if one of them goes bad, guess what? Your car is not gonna work anymore. True. Okay? True. So, companies need to be careful about it, and it's going to evolve. You, this is an area where a government also has to play a very important part. Right. And put in more enablers in place. Yes, enablers plus sec securitization of itself. Okay. Uh, making sure that the government companies are aware, making sure that they provide assistance to the companies in the event of a, of a cyber attack and not just take them and name them in the newspaper and saying they got attacked. Okay. So I think it's a much more evolved game which has to be done. And I think we're gearing, India per se is gearing up for India is gearing up, definitely. That. India is gearing up. Now, what do you think will be the top cybersecurity challenges in the coming years? Uh, definitely spam, mails, ransomware. But I think more important than that is called deep fakes. Deep fakes. Deep fakes. Everything, you know, it's how you perceive a website, let's say. Right. Okay. The deep fakes will be so good mm. that recognizing them is okay, next to impossible. It's next to impossible. Okay. So I think deep fake technology is evolving very, very quickly. Is there anything which which is there to prevent it? The answer is no. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. But I think it will evolve. Okay. Uh, and and I think data privacy. Data security uh, has got to be, I would say, taken on a war footing, footing basis because that is where the threat vectors are going to concentrate upon. Right. Because that's where the monetization comes. Absolutely. True. Uh, uh, you also mentioned earlier a lot of smaller companies also need to, you know, think of cybersecurity and everything. Uh, but how, I mean, they're not aware. The biggest problem is that they are not aware. How do you think um, companies offering these kind of services can create that kind of awareness for them? Um, getting down to the fact that awareness, you know, information is free. Okay. But getting to them is the biggest, is the biggest challenge, right? They will have, I would say, the best of the, let's say, the laptop or the desktop equipment. Um, including if they're utilizing the standard Windows Windows 10 operating system. You don't need an external antivirus system. You need you utilize it internally, but they don't turn it on. Okay. They don't turn on the firewalls. Okay. Uh, even in people's houses. Okay. Their, their modems, which provide them broadband, they will have a password of 12345 or their mobile number or the name. Okay. Uh, there's so many instances which keep on coming in where they say, Actually, one of the instances which I read quite some time back was a terrorist which actually hacked into a home, okay, 
and was sending, utilizing the broadband to send messages. So the person in the home got caught when they did the forensic analysis. But this is what I'm trying to say, it's awareness which is not there in this country and that needs to be extrapolated and ex exercised faster. Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that bit. Well, thank you, Kushu, for sharing about cybersecurity, your opinions and your views. I think it's a really good piece to hear from you. Thank you. On that.